Yo, what is good, Knicks Nation? Welcome back to Knicks Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I want to break down the Knicks wing position and go over each player on the depth chart and give you guys my overall thoughts about this position and each individual player. I'm super excited to break down this video. For those guys that do not know, I already made a video breaking down the point guards. I talked about Kemba Walker, D. Rose, Emmanuel Quickly, and Miles McBride. So in this one, we're going to be talking about five players in total. RJ Barrett, Evan Fournier, Alec Burks, Kevin Knox, and Quentin Grimes. There are some other wings on the roster, such as Dwayne Bacon and a lot of other guys that are lower on the depth chart. But in this one, I just want to talk about these five guys in particular and go over their individual stats from last year and what we can expect from them going into this season. Before I hop into the video, I just want to mention if you guys are new to Knicks Media, please make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you want to check me out over on Instagram and Twitter, that is at nynicks underscore media. And if you enjoy the video, please do not forget to thumbs it up. With that being said, let's hop right into the video starting off with my guy rj barrett so rj barrett is coming off a phenomenal year two in the nba with the new york knicks he made a jump in every single statistical category. I made an entire video breaking down why I believe RJ Barrett is destined to break out in year three. If you guys want to check that video out, you definitely should because I broke down RJ's numbers from his rookie year, his sophomore year, and what I projected from him this year. But let's go into his stats even in this video briefly. So starting off with his rookie numbers with the Knicks two seasons ago, he played in 56 games, averaged 14.3 points per game, five rebounds, 2.6 assists, 40% from the field and shot 32% from the three-point land. So his rookie season was a little underwhelming in terms of efficiency wise. I still do not agree with the fact that he was not on the all rookie NBA first or second team. That was pretty insane. But what does RJ Barrett do in year number two? He improves in every single stat. That's what you want to see from a guy that's drafted third overall, make it a, a huge improvement. And he really focused on his weakness in, his, in the offseason going from his rookie year to sophomore year. And that was his shooting. Now look at his 2021 numbers, which was indeed last year. Um, 72 games played, 17.6 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, three assists, and 44.1% from the field and 40.1% from downtown. So obviously the numbers improved in every single category and that's all you want to see from RJ Barrett. RJ really has a chance to prove to be one of the best players on this Knicks team. I think it's going to be hard because there's guys like, you know, Kemba Walker, even Evan Fournier, obviously Julius Randle, uh, Derek Rose off the bench, but RJ Barrett has a chance to really, you know, solidify himself as a future of this team because he was the third overall pick. He's getting better every single year. And this is a crazy fun fact, guys. RJ Barrett's the same age as the rookies on this team. He's the same age as Deuce McBride and the same age as Quentin Grimes. And he's entering year number three. That just gives you a little idea of how young RJ Barrett is and how much room he has to improve. And if RJ continues the trajectory of getting better each offseason and working on his weaknesses, and then all of a sudden he comes out and improves in every single category, that's a really good sign. What I think RJ is going to improve on in this year and what he's going to start doing in year number three, that's going to be shooting off the dribble. And he said that he worked on that all off season with his um with his trainer drew all they would worked on is really focusing in on being able to create your own jump shot sidestep step back jump shots and what did rj barrett work on last offseason going into year number two well that was a shooting they fix his jump shot and then all of a sudden rj barrett shoots 40 percent from three so obviously we know that rj puts in the work and you see the results first and foremost so rj barrett i'm expecting a lot of good things from him so some of the strengths i have for rj is definitely catch and shoot we saw him in the corner being absolute beast last year um his defense Defense is going to be uh, has to take a big leap this year because as we know Reggie Bullock is not on the Knicks anymore and he was definitely our best perimeter defender on the team so RJ Barrett's going to have to step up he's going to have to really defend the best players on the opponent's team every single night if he wants to really establish himself as a two-way wing player in the NBA he's also proved to be clutch I think that you know early on this season last year he missed a game winner against the Minnesota Timberwolves and then ever since that moment he became very clutch late in the fourth quarter remember that game against the Grizzlies. He had a clutch shot against, I think, the Toronto Raptors, if I'm not mistaken. But he proved to be a clutch player at such a young age. That's a very good sign. He also has a great mindset, and that's the, the best part about RJ Barrett's game, in my opinion. He never wavers. He's never too high. He's never too low. We saw that crazy dunk he did in the playoffs, and you just see him have a crazy straight face. Like he just has the mindset of get the work done, and he's a relentless work ethic guy. And then the last strength to have is attacking the rim. 
This isn't his best strength, but I feel like it is in his arsenal where he's going to develop this over time. I feel like that's something that he needs to improve on as well, though, is absorbing the contact down, uh, down below in the rim and finishing through contact. Now, let's get into some of his weaknesses that I want to see him really take a big step in in year number three. His shot creation, like I mentioned, that's what he's been working on all offseason. So I'm expecting him to all of a sudden come out here and be able to uh, create his own jump shot off the dribble and finish through contact like I just alluded to. Um, his free throw shooting did go up from year one to year two. I do want to see that make another big step because that's a really crucial part to RJ's game because he's going to be getting hacked a lot driving to the rim and I'm just overall expecting him to take a big leap in year number three. So now let's get into Evan Fournier. So Evan Fournier came to the Knicks in the free agency and he's replacing Reggie Bullock in the starting lineup. So Evan Fournier's numbers last year, he played a total of 42 games across the Orlando Magic and the Boston Celtics. Um, he finished with 17.1 points per game, three rebounds, 3.4 assists, 45.7% from the field and 41.7% from three-point land. So obviously Evan Fournier is a shooter and he's going to provide a big impact on this team when it comes to the offensive side of the ball. The one thing I will say that gives me a little, you know, I'm a little concerned about this Knicks team in replacing Reggie Bullock with Evan Fournier is defense. I feel like that we might take a little step back on the perimeter in terms of defense because Reggie was the anchor when it came to that side of the ball. But on the flip side of things, Evan Fournier is going to help us out offensively because he is a guy that can shoot the ball all over the all over the floor. He's a three-level scorer. He can attack the rim, uh, shoot the ball from mid-range, shoot the ball from downtown. So he's going to bring another weapon offensively to the Knicks that really Reggie Bullock didn't bring. Reggie was more of that catch-and-shoot type of guy. He's very limited on the offensive side of the ball. Evan Fournier, he's really good at creating his own jump shot. He's really good at spacing the floor. He's also a good playmaker. He can put the ball on the floor. He can create shots for others. He can create his own jump shot. Something that Reggie never really did. So Evan Fournier is going to come into this Knicks team and really change the dynamic of this offense. And I'm really excited to see what Tom Thibodeau and the coaching staff can get creative with with Evan Fournier. He's also a pure scorer. He's a guy that can put up 20 plus points um, any given night. I don't think he's going to average that. I think he's going to average around the same uh, points as last year because of who we have on the roster. We have Julius Randle. We have Kemba Walker. We have RJ. Like there's no way they're all going to be averaging like a lot of points per game unless our offense just explodes this year. I'm expecting Evan Fournier to average around 17, 18 points per game this year. That's really realistic in my eyes. Um, but the one thing I will say that's a weakness at Evan Fournier's game is his defense compared to Reggie Bullock. So that's definitely something to look out for how the Knicks coaching staff is going to schematically approach the defensive side of the ball. If he can just put in that 110% effort and know where spots are and his communication is there, I got no issues with Evan Fournier. And I'm excited to see what he can do in his first season with the New York Knicks. Now let's get into Alec Burks. He's going to be our wing guy off the bench. I think our bench is going to look like D Rose, IQ, Alec Burks, Obi Toppin, and Nerlens Noel. So Alec Burks is probably going to be playing the small forward position, but as you guys know, Alec Burks is not only a small forward. He's not only a shooting guard. He can play the one. He's a very, you know, versatile guy that the Knicks coaching staff loves to utilize. So he may be not be uh, labeled as a wing, but he can play all over the, uh, the floor. He's very versatile. So getting to his numbers from last season, he played 49 total games and averaged 12.7 points per game, 4.6 rebounds, 2.2 assists, 42% from the field and shot 41.5% from downtown. So his shooting was off the charts last year. I think the main thing that Alec Burks did last year for the Knicks is be, is be that clutch scorer in late in the fourth quarter. There's so many times where all of a sudden Alec Burks takes over the game in the fourth quarter and basically leads us to victory. Um, I love that about Alec Burks. He really turns on another switch, it seems like, with six minutes left in the fourth quarter. And we need guys like that late in the fourth quarter. Now, getting to some of his strengths, definitely his versatility like I alluded to earlier. He could play all over the floor. If we do have injuries at the point guard spot, you know that Alec Burks can slide in there and provide, you know, that impact of running the offense. Um, he's also very clutch, like I mentioned. His shot creation is off the charts. He can create his own jump shot. His ball handling is beautiful. He has a lot of highlight plays where he decides people up, attacks the rim, crazy acrobatic floaters and crazy acrobatic layups. And he's also a flamethrower. There's some times when Alec Burks gets hot He's unstoppable. He seems like he doesn't miss. And I feel like that's the type of uh, player that Alec Burks is. And I'm very excited that we brought him in because he's going to provide a big impact off the bench for the Knicks this season. Some things I want to see him improve on in year number two with the Knicks is definitely his playmaking. I feel like if he is going to play the one at times, we need him to be able to slow it down because I know that he's played the one and, and he doesn't really play the one at an elite level by any means. But I definitely want to see him take a step playmaking wise, even if he's not playing the one. If he's, you know, on the bench and he's rolling with D Rose and IQ, 
Ryu and Obi. I want to see him, you know, be passive. Don't, you know, look at the rim too much. Don't be just a pure scorer. Get your teammates involved. I also want to see him take a step defensively. I feel like he's very solid on the defensive side of the ball. I do not think he's a liability by any means, but I do think he has a chance to really develop his game under Tom Thibodeau, especially entering year number two in the system. And then this is a pretty funny weakness because like I said, he gets really hot at times, but he also gets really cold at times. There's some times where a couple games in a row, Alec Burks cannot hit a jump shot at all and he looks ice cold and he should not be shooting and it's really frustrating. So there's two sides of Alec Burks. It's really either he's red hot or he's ice cold. So that's really my thoughts of Alec Burks. Let's get into Kevin Knox. So Kevin Knox, he's entering, I think, what is this, year number four for Kevin Knox. He did not really have that much of an impact with the Knicks last year because of all the veterans ahead of him just played better ball. Uh, Alec Kevin Knox did play some minutes, but he did not really see the floor really at all. So Kevin Knox appeared in 42 games and he had 3.9 points per game, 1.5 rebounds, 0.5 assists, shot 39.2% from the field and 39.3% from downtown. So some things I want to see from Kevin Knox, if he does get a chance to play this year, I think the only way Kevin Knox plays is if there's injuries to guys like Alec Burks or Evan Fournier, guys ahead of him, because I feel like he's going to be, you know, not in the rotation at all to start the season. Uh, if you guys remember last year, he's more that situation guy you know that third string guy you know that third unit um i'm not really expecting to see Knox, but i am I'm excited to see him play this year because tom thibodeau said he had a really good summer and i'm a pretty much uh, i'm really high on kevin Knox. i always believed in him i always had a lot of you know expectations for kevin Knox. i know some knicks fans hate him and you know write him off and all that stuff but and i can see why you're coming from there you know he does not really prove anything yet in the nba but one thing that I like about Kevin Knox is he is really good at catch and shoot opportunities. When he did see the floor last year, there were some times where he absolutely lit it up, hit three threes in a row. He's a flamethrower shooter, but that's the problem. He's very limited. He can really only shoot the ball from downtown when he's open or with, he can shoot it sometimes when there's people in his face. But what I'm trying to say is he's very limited as a basketball player on the offensive side of the ball. He really struggles attacking the rim. He really struggles with his ball handling. He can't really create his own jump shot. He's more of a guy that's just a spot up shooter in the corner. If he's wide open, give him the rock catch and shoot opportunities and you'll cash them in so if kevin knox does get to see the floor this year due to injuries i have confidence in him i love his hustle i love his mentality when it comes to him on the floor but there are some things that he needs to work on he's very sloppy with the ball at times he turns the ball over he really does not have the aggressiveness to the rim like i would want to see him when he when in terms of attacking the rim so we'll see if kevin knox gets to see the floor this year and then to finish off the video we have the rookie to talk about quentin grimes now this is another interesting player how is he going to see the floor? The only way that he sees the floor is if there's injuries, in my opinion, because there's so many guys ahead of him on the depth chart, but I definitely think that Grimes is going to get his opportunity to see what he's worth in his rookie season. So going over his Houston numbers last year in his last season in, in the NCAA, he played in 30 games and averaged 17.8 points per game, 5.7 rebounds, two assists, shot 40.6% from the field, and 40.3% from downtown. So he's a shooter. He's a lights out scorer. We saw him in summer league. He started off a little, didn't really play that well in the summer league and we're like oh my god our first round picks not even doing well in the summer league this is pretty disappointing but then all of a sudden he turned it up a notch and turned into like an absolute sniper from downtown pulling up people in his face mid-range pull-ups fadeaways step backs i'm like yo quinn grimes looks like a stud so I think his number one strength is definitely his shooting, his ability to create his own jump shot and defense. I feel like he is going to replace that Reggie Bullock type of player um, in terms of that three and D wing, but I don't know if he's going to get the minutes that Reggie Bullock got. You know, I feel like the, the play style of Quentin Grimes is three and D wing. You know, he can be able to put the ball on the floor. He can create his own jump shot. And he's also very good on the defensive side of the ball. He can hustle. He plays at 110%. And I feel like Tom Thibodeau is going to fall in love with Quentin Grimes. Some things that he lacks on that I want to see him improve on in terms of what he did in college, what he needs to really work on in terms of translating it to the pros is his consistency and his ability to attack the rim. I feel like he's way more of a shooter. He tries too much to force up shots. I want to see him take more high percentage looks and just force it up. So that's my thoughts of all these players in terms of the Knicks at that wing position. RJ Barrett, Evan Fournier, Alec Burks, Kevin Knox, Quentin Grimes. I know those other players didn't talk about like Dwayne Bacon and other guys on the roster, but these are the five guys I want to talk about personally. Please leave a comment down below your thoughts about these guys. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Comment down below Statue of Liberty emoji if you stayed until the end of the video. And also if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to Knicks Media as I got so much on the way leading up until this season. That does it for this video guys and hope you guys have a fantastic day. Let's go Knicks. Peace.